Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about three perfumes that I recently picked up from Zara. Two of them are in their newer Rose line. I think there's like five or six perfumes in this line. These two were the best in my opinion. Uh, they are Cela Rose and then Mystic Rose. I also picked up Yellow Velvet, which is from a different line. Uh, I almost didn't try this because I was uh, surrounded by a few other perfumes they have that I don't like. Um, but I decided to give it a shot and I'm really happy that I did because it turns out to be a beautiful, uh, fruity kind of perfume. So I'll talk about that one at the end, but I'm going to start with uh, Cela Rose. So most Zara perfumes I'm thinking are supposed to be like uh, dupes for more popular expensive perfumes. Uh, I think that's how it works. So with Cela Rose, uh, it's being compared a lot to La Labo Rose 31, which I have right here. So I can compare that for you today. Uh, Sailor Rose is um, comprised of three notes. It has pink pepper, rose, and uh, oud. To me, this is a uh, very dry, spicy kind of perfume. Very dry, spicy rose perfume. Uh, and it's that, uh, contemporary, uh, very in vogue, unisex, rose, woods and spices kind of combination that you see, uh, you kind of see a lot these days. Um, I'm not complaining though, because I generally like that. Um, it's not m my ideal rose, but, um, I do like it, uh, sometimes. So, uh, yeah, very, very dry. Uh, and the rose in Sailor Rose is like, to me, it smells kind of, I'm getting like a, maybe the bottle, which is a purpley mauve color. Maybe that's influencing me, but I'm getting like a purpley kind of pinky rose. It feels a bit inky and cold. That's the kind of rose that I'm getting. And then, uh, spice wise, I do feel like it is very peppery. Um, I could see black pepper even being a note in this more so than pink pepper. It feels more intense and sharp uh, than just pink pepper. Oud, I don't really get in this perfume. How does it compare to Rose 31? So I will say that the rose in Sailor Rose to me seems like it's stronger than um, the way rose appears in rose 31. Uh, the rose in rose 31 to me is, uh, it's very abstract and it's almost kind of lost amongst the other ingredients, or uh, not ingredients, but the other notes in the perfume. And by the way, I'm like surprised because in uh, rose 31, I expected there to there, there to be like three or four different kinds of spices, uh, but there's only cumin that's showing up on Fragrantica. I'm shocked because uh, Rose 31 almost could be called Pepper 31 because it's very, very peppery. Uh, but Lilabo, they already have a pepper. It's called like Poivre something. They already have a pepper perfume, but Rose 31 is super peppery in my opinion. Um, so with Rose 31, so I'm smelling them both. I feel like Sela Rose is maybe a bit sharper, surprisingly. And I think that's due to the rose. I think that um, cold, inky floral rose is giving it a little bit more of a sharpness to it. And this, the uh, pepper in here is a bit sharper than 
the rose and the pepper in rose 31. That one feels a little bit more smoothed out and soft. Uh, also, because um, the rose in rose 31 isn't super strong for me, and because it is dominated more by the spices, rose 31 has almost like a carbonated, fizzy, uh, like soda effect for me. A little bit like uh, cola, like Coca-Cola. Uh, it doesn't smell like it, but it gives me a bit of that vibe. Uh, Sailor Rose, I'm not getting that uh, in this perfume for some reason. And I think it's because of that rose. It's, it's just uh, maybe a little bit too floral for that. Uh, but um, what was I going to say? Yeah, this is like... To me, it's very earthy. I feel like this would appeal to the kind of person that uh, wants to give off a earthy, um, natural kind of um, aura. Somebody like, um, who was her name? Lisa Bonet. Like I could imagine her uh, enjoying this perfume or like Mary Kate Olsen. I could see her liking this. I wonder if this is anything like Nirvana, uh, what is it called? Nirvana Red or Nirvana Rose. It's Mary Kane Ashley's um, line. I think it's now defunct, maybe. It was called like Elizabeth and James. Um, but they had a, a peppery rose perfume in their line with had like vetiver also. I'm wondering if this is anything like that. I have a feeling like it is. Uh, so... Yeah, that's this perfume. It's very beautiful. I think it smells quality. I don't think that it smells cheap. Uh, so that's why I picked it up. Even though Zara perfumes are, you know, comparatively inexpensive, I just, you know, I'm not going to get something just for the sake of getting something. Uh, I have to think it's uh, good, you know, good perfumery. Uh, okay. So that's Sailor Rose. Um, so yes, it is a lot like Rose 31, just to sum it up. It's a lot like Rose 31, but Rose 31 to me is a bit um, rounder, softer around the edges, whereas Sailor Rose is a little bit sharper with its uh, pepper and with its rose note. Um, but, uh, oh, I, and I guess I should say like, um, if you have, Sailor Rose, do you need Rose 31? Uh, I would say you could happily own both of them. I, I wouldn't say don't get Rose 31 because you have this. Um, but La Labo is so expensive, you know? Uh, but I, I find Rose 31 worth owning. Okay. For Mystic Rose, that is compared to... Uh, Portrait of a Lady from Frederick Mel. That's what everybody on Fragrantica is saying. That and uh, I think it's called Cafe Rose from Tom Ford, which I tried years ago and I remember not liking it. So with Mystic Rose, it has the note of cranberry. It has rose and it also has amberwood. Amberwood to me is can be so harsh and dry so I was like nervous to see that um it's kind of like a wild card for me um portrait of a lady has a lot of different notes going on uh and um I would say that that's kind of like a spicy rose perfume mystic rose to me it's not <clears throat> I guess you could call it spicy. I can't really pinpoint which spice in particular, but I definitely get uh, some spice out of it. But I do think that it's a little bit more based around like woodiness and rose. The cranberry you experience on initial blast for the first five or so minutes. And then it seems to kind of go away for the most part. And uh, the way it smells is like a concentrated 
uh, cranberry syrup, uh, kind of medicinal, like a tangy medicinal concentrated um, cranberry syrup that you were making on the stove and letting it reduce until it formed like a very thick, uh, dense uh, version of itself. Uh, so yeah, you get some of that cranberry fruitiness in the beginning and then it goes away and then I'm left with rose. I'm left with that rose and I'm left with the wood. Um, no wood in particular. I can't even say I'm getting amber wood, but it just smells like sort of a woody a woody um but it's primarily rose i think this is more focused about around rose than this is um it's a very similar kind of vibe as this one uh i could see you um i could definitely see you not needing to own both of these perfumes you could own one or the other um if you like something more spicy get this one um this one uh not as spicy, but the rose even, the rose note is pretty similar in, in both of them. Yeah, it's, um, actually I'd say it's a bit softer here and it's a bit sharper here. The rose and ro uh, portrait of a lady, by the way, I think it's sharper than the rose and mystic rose. This is a little bit more, um, fun, a little bit more of a juiciness to the rose. Maybe it's because of the cranberry, but I find the one in uh, Portrait of a Lady way too dry and uh, I don't really like it too much. So is Mystic Rose a good dupe for Portrait of Lady? I would say yes. And I would say it might even be better uh, to some people because it's similar, but um, has a more pleasing rosiness in my opinion. Uh, concerning performance, this one lasted me longer than this one. This is a pretty decent performer. Um, I found this one to be just a little bit, uh, weaker. So that's Mystic Rose. And then, uh, with Yellow Velvet. Okay. In my perfume, uh, journey, I have been constantly looking for a peach perfume that speaks to me I require like a very fresh juicy bright airy kind of peach like think um, pink and light blue think of those colors maybe yellow this kind of yellow think of those colors um, when it comes to the, my kind of peach that I'm looking for and I usually find it in uh, Japanese body products, like Japanese body lotion, body wash, even household products like cl window cleaner, whatever. Um, the Japanese just, they do peach so well. And I think a lot of Asian countries in general do fruity notes really well. Yellow velvet is very close to the perfect peach that I'm trying to find. It has three notes. It has uh, peach, uh, it has vanilla, and orchid. The orchid is a fantasy note, so that's up to the perfumer to convey however they want. I can say that I'm not getting a strong uh, floral note in this perfume. I'm getting uh, peach and vanilla. The peach and vanilla are um, not really competing against each other. I find that the peach is definitely shining brightest uh, out of all three notes. And the vanilla is more like a support. And I feel like it's adding more warmth and roundness to an already round peachy note. Peach is very joyful, very juicy, comforting. Um, a ha very happy kind of fruity note and then vanilla just makes that even better normally i would be nervous to see vanilla in the note breakdown but here i'm 
I, I think it's doing really wonderful things with the peach. So that's fine with me. And I do get it when I smell this perfume. I do smell, but it's a, like a radiant, uh, and maybe that's what the peach is doing to the vanilla. It's giving it this like sunshine radiance. If you look at the bottle, the visual of the yellow glass is like the glistening sun, the warmth of the sun on a peach. And that's kind of how I'm experiencing this perfume, the warm sun on a peach with a blue sky and a cool breeze blowing in the air. Uh, so that's this perfume to me. It's really, really nice. And it, it's not a peach uh, that is photorealistic. It's not a peach that is a peach ring. It's somewhere in the middle. It is, like I said earlier, it's like what you would find in a body product, a lotion or a shampoo, but specifically one out of Japan. Uh, hopefully you're lucky enough to know what that is like. And if you don't, go to your nearest uh, Asian store and try to find that kind of product. You'll see what I mean. Uh, anyways, if you're a peach lover, you have to do that. I am a total peach lover. But it's so weird because it's hard to find good peach perfumes. Uh, I remember trying Valaya and it looked very promising, but it was not peachy enough. And the peach wasn't as good as it could have been. So um, I'm not done with Yellow Velvet yet because I have to say that <clears throat> I decided the other day to uh, layer it with another perfume. The thought just dawned on me and uh, I felt like I had to layer it with Jessica McClintock, her signature perfume. This is a total cheapie. You could have it for under $20. It's a beautiful uh, Muge perfume, like a lily of the valley. Very green, airy, fresh, but it is also very strong. So the profile is light but it's a strong perfume and it lasts for hours and hours. Uh, I need to explore this house more. Uh, when I look on Fragrantica, the perfumes, all of them look pretty much the same, but I'm, I like this so much that I just have to try what else they have. But okay, layering this with uh, yellow velvet is amazing. If you like a fresh, like a peach freshy, you have to layer these two because you get the freshness, the crispiness, the airiness of um, the Muge, this perfume, combined with the warmth and the juiciness and the um, the happiness of the peach in uh, yellow velvet. And the combination of the two is incredible. And it's so close to the type of peach that I'm after. I'm really happy that I decided to experiment by layering these two together because it completely worked uh, the way I'd hoped it would work. All right, so that went on longer than I had hoped. I really tried to narrow this down, but uh, those are my thoughts on these perfumes. Uh, if you've tried them, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you liked them or hated them, uh, I'd be curious, but, uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Oh, if you have suggestions for me when it comes to peach, definitely let me know, but have a great rest of your day and goodbye.